one that's complete. Okay, and I put it on my YouTube channel, which I'll, I'll share with you later if you want to go back and look at my classes. Um, okay, so we covered, um, you know, kind of like why, we, why we're here tonight. And again, you can choose to share. I like to have a little, you know, show and tell time at the end of class. I don't, it's really hard for me over Zoom to critique and most people hate the sound of the word critique it's like oh i'm being judged and so i don't like to get into critiques especially in a drawing 101 class where we're just learning the basics and um learning how to see learning how to think I also want to briefly cover now, before we get into our exercises, I wanted to go over some materials because there are so many drawing products out there. And that's why I said you just need a pencil and a paper to, and some paper tonight. I don't care if it's copy or paper from your computer or um, I did mention a spiral bound a sketchbook. And the reason I like spiral is that it can turn in on itself and so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, breaking the spine or anything like that. So the materials that we're using, we're, you can use a regular B pencil and a number two HB. And you're probably wondering what are the the letters and the numbers on these pencils and how do how do I know what to choose as a drawing pencil so on a pencil b stands for black how black the um intensity of the graphite is and most pencils now are no longer made with lead they're made with graphite which is a mixture of clay and graphite and they come in all different darkness densities and hardness. So the softer the pencil, um, the B pencils are very black and they're soft. The H on a pencil means hard. So HB means hard black and um, which is kind of like medium hard. And F, if you see an F on a pencil, it stands for firm. So you'll, you'll see a variety of um, letters and numbers on your pencils and graphite. There is a Derwent that makes a whole line of these. And I don't push any one brand. Uh, yeah, um, Derwent makes these graphic tone, graphic tone Derwent. Um, this is like an 8B, it's a very dark wash, it says. And this is a 4B, so it's a medium wash and a 6B. So they're soft, a B pencil, let me put this up close. A B pencil is gonna be like velvety and soft where if you use a mechanical pencil, and sometimes when I'm, um, I look at my little art bag, I like one of these uh, big mechanical pencils, but the, they can be, the, the tip can break easily, and they're, they're more gray than dark, as you can see there. They're, um, they're a harder lead, so they give off more of a grayish line where, um, the, uh, the softer pencils will give off a more velvety, yummy, lush line. Um, this is a Sanford Design Ebony. So they, they all, look at how dark and soft this one is. My God, so that's very rich. You can also get, where's my Sergeant's charcoal pencil? Charcoal is fun. Um, that's Derwin sketching. Where did you go? I'll find him. Um, this is a mega graphite and it's really thick and dark, but you can't get this one into a regular 
pencil sharpener. You have to, I, I have to whittle it with an exacto knife. So that's kind of a pain. But I have to tell you my new discovery. And it's called the black wing. And it actually has like this eraser thing on the end. Who makes this? I don't know. It just says black wing. But I never really uh, played that much with pencils until when COVID started and I used to see this, it makes a lush line, but it's not as velvety as the other one. Um, when COVID started and I started, I was home more, I enrolled in, right, subscribed to these like monthly delivery of art supplies. One is, I did six months of Sketchbox and six months of art snacks. And every month you get, a box of, and it's like a surprise package of drawing tools. They might be inks and some brushes, um, a set of pencils. And it was fun, I enjoyed it. But uh, after a year, I've now accumulated all these great drawing pencils that I never would have known to buy. Like when you walk down the aisle, at even uh, at a Michael's store, they have lots of pencils. So there's so many that you can consider. Uh, Derwent is a good brand. They make a whole line of sketching. I do like that black wing. I think you can get it on Amazon. I didn't see it. Michael's has a limited selection. Um, my favorite places to shop for our supplies are Dick Blick online. There's Jerry's Artorama, and there's one right up in Norwalk off of 95, uh, a real brick and mortar place, but you can um, order online from them. Uh, Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Amazon is great. You can get anything on Amazon, but um, and you can get it the next day, but it's not exactly um, budget. You know, you're paying full retail there. But if you're buying things in bulk, um, you can go one of, to the one of the bigger vendors. Also, I try not to push erasers because I don't really want you to erase that much, but a white eraser I like, and if it gets kind of dingy, I can just slice off the dingy edge with my Exacto knife. Sometimes you get those old fashioned, do I have it nearby that like gray kneaded eraser? It was like, Mind me like Play-Doh or something. And it, that was just a mess. So I stick with a plain white eraser. And if it gets kind of um, icky, I just shave it down. So the nice clean white rubber is underneath. So paper, you can use any paper, but make sure that what you're putting on the paper is friendly with the, uh, the paper. Meaning if you're using a really light paper, like um, something out of your computer printer, you don't wanna be using a mechanical pencil that can, it can um, some, because they're so hard, they can often make a pressure mark on the paper, it's only almost like a score line. It makes an indent, like if you had taken um, a butter knife and ran it down your paper, it, it makes an actual scratch. So you don't want that. If you're using a flimsy paper, use a soft pencil. I still can't find that charcoal pencil, but I know I had it earlier because I had everything all laid out. Um, I also like to have a little stash of art supplies. If I'm, uh, you know, if I'm traveling, I will have a small little sketchbook and a little package of art supplies. Where in here, I have a collapsible Exacto knife. I have assorted sketching um, pencils, including a, a mechanical pencil and a couple of Sharpies, a pair of little scissors and a little squirt bottle for water if I'm adding um, watercolor, whatever, and a little short little ruler. And all of this fits into this, I buy this, you know, the small sizes. 
Uh, this is a little tape and a little um, eraser. They all go in this little pencil powder. And then you can get these travel size sketchbooks that you can take and you know with you on vacation or whatever. And it's very handy. You don't have to lug a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes you can just sketch on site and then go home and decide, oh, I'm going to apply watercolor to it or whatever, or I'm going to fix it at home. But it's nice to have your supplies with you if you're out and about. But just you know, throw it in the car, have a bag in the car. And if you're at a park and you're just in the mood to sit down and sketch the pond or whatever, go for it. It's nice to be ready, you know, when the, when the mood strikes you. You don't always have to be inspired by a grand sunset or a beautiful bouquet to practice drawing. I encourage you to draw what's in front of you. Now, what I wanna do now, if everybody has a piece of paper and a pencil, I wanna do just a little exercise to get you to think about how our brain and our eye and our hand are all coordinated and have to work in unison to make this work. So what I want you to do, oh, what did I have? Um, what I want you to do is think, and you're going to write your name upside down and backwards. So my name is Katie. K-A-T-I-E, upside down and backwards. Think about it, then you'll flip it over and you can see. But this is where we gotta engage the brain and the eye and think about writing our name upside down and backwards. It takes some thinking. Good. Okay, so now you've got that connection established that I, I really, you know, I got to think and I got to move and I've got to, because we all know how to write our name and so many times um, we just sign off and just go like this, but now you really had to look and um, think about it. So that being said, drawing is a combination of sight and observation. Now you're working with a pencil. What some of my demos, I'm gonna be using a thick Sharpie or magic marker to illustrate big because I don't, you know, it's hard for you to see. So I'm gonna be doing it bigger to demonstrate. Now, when I talk about sight versus observation, when we draw from memory or when we draw uh, from our imagination, we are using zero observation and we're drawing from memory or from imagination. So let's take a very simple form talking about that. In my head, let's take it's spring, let's think tulips. When we think tulips, oh, we say, okay, well, you know, it, it goes like this, you know, a tulip. It has that kind of uh, thing at the top and it's got a stem. Oh, somebody's coming in. All right, let me let, uh, okay, we is coming in. Okay. Welcome back, Lee. Okay, so just talking about observation versus what was that about? Okay, wait a minute. I thought I let her in. Okay, good. I think everybody's in. Okay, hi, Lee. Hi, it just, it just let me in. So I'm glad okay. I'm leaving off my phone. Thank okay, you. good. Thank All right, you. sure. Um, okay, so we're talking about sight versus observation. When we draw something from memory, 
and this being like a little uh, tulip thing that's got the little zigzag thing at the top and whatever. That's just saying in my head, this is what I um, think, this is what I remember a tulip looks like. Observation is when you're actually, and I went out in my garden today and I picked some tulips, is when you're actually looking at it and you're breaking it down into basic shape. And that's what drawing is all about, is basic shapes. Now, in my head, when I just did this little um, thing with the tulip, it look, doesn't look anything like this. Maybe a suggestion of the general shape, but what I'm going to do now, now that I just showed you what 0% observation is in drawing from memory, I think I need a thicker one. Let me go to a thicker one. Um, oh yeah, that's much better. Um, now what I'm going to do is demonstrate, and I, um, I, I'm gonna do it first and then I'm gonna have you do it or try it. 100% observation is what I'm going to show you. It's called a blind contour drawing. That means that you don't, you are not looking at your paper. You are only looking at the object. And that is such a fun thing to do. And the results are often unpredictable and it's just fun. So. What I'm going to do is I am holding this rose here, but see, I don't want to hold it. How can I hold it? So I'm looking at, okay, so you can see it too. Because let me see if I can move this a little closer. I am only going to look at that tulip. I am not going to look at my paper. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to set our timer. Um, let me see, maybe, maybe, let me do a short one for 30 seconds. Set timer for 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. 30 seconds, counting down. Good, okay, I'm looking at the tip of this tulip. It goes down, it comes around, then it's got another thing there. And now another shape that goes around there, and it's got this, and I'm not, oh, you, you can't take your, your um, uh, you can't pick your pencil up. And it's got like these things around here at the top. I'm just looking at the shapes. All right. Well, that's one thing. Okay, there's my timer. Done. Okay. That is the blind contour drawing of the tulip. That's when I was only looking at the tulip. This tulip shape was when I was not looking at the tulip and I was just relying and you know in my memory what I thought a tulip could be so we've got the total opposite we have zero percent observation and a hundred percent observation uh, the ideal drawing is somewhere in between and that like 50 50 zone when you're drawing you want to be looking at your subject half, if not more than half of the time. <laughs> so what I want to do to help you do this is give you a little hint. Let me flip this over. Because when you're drawing... Sometimes it might get in the way if we're thinking, oh, I've got to draw this tulip and I want it to look like a tulip, but I, I want to be looking at that and not get hung up about how it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to look. So an easy little tip I can give you, and it might not work with all subject matter, turn your subject upside down and draw it upside down and then you're just looking at the shapes and everything is a shape so when I draw this now and I'm looking at it upside down 
I see that there's something that comes down here and then we have a shape. I'm looking at a shape that goes this way and then it comes up. And I'm not thinking about what a tulip is supposed to look like. I'm just looking at these various shapes that present themselves and then there's like a line here and then this goes there and then there's this and it comes over that way a little bit and then there's another line like that so I wasn't my head wasn't clouded with what is a tulip supposed to look like if you draw something upside down it takes that out of the equation. So then when you turn it back up this way, it kind of makes more sense to you. It's like, oh yeah, okay, now I see it's a tool. Um, what if you have something in front of you, um, and it could be, it could be your feet. <laughs> Sometimes when I draw, I just draw whatever is in front of me. It could be a cup of coffee. It could be a plant on your desk. It could be a flower. It could be a tube of paint. And a tube of paint is, an, is you know, it's another example where we say, oh, or even a tube of toothpaste. Okay, you know, it's got like a, a cap and then it's got like, you know, some kind of tube and you have in your head what it might, what it's supposed to look like. But then, then you really do pull out a tube of paint. Well, it might be all curled up and twisted. And that's when you have to say, I'm just going to forget that it's a tube of paint and I'm going to paint the shapes I see. So if you have something in front of you and you can do this on your lap. Now, what... I did this winter when I was in Florida. I, I'm right-handed and I have come to realize in the past couple of years that I really gypped myself by not training my left hand. If I could draw and paint with dexterity on both hands, draw and paint at the same time, I would be generating so much more art. <laughs> which I love to do to begin with. But um, so I started teaching my, I, I've been doing my drawing exercises with my left hand. And this is what I would like you to do for the week ahead is spend, I want you to do three drawings a day, five minutes each. So you that's just, you know, 15 minutes. Spending 15 minutes on one drawing, it, you're going to start getting really tight. But if you spend five minutes on a drawing, you'll be able to get the gist of it. Now, and what I did in my book, I'll show you. You know, one, one night I drew my feet and I've been working with my left hand and writing with my left hand to try and get better at that. Um, and then I would put how many minutes it took me and, and the date so I could see my progression. So if you do like February 1st, left hand, um, February 3rd, left hand only 25 minutes. So if then you can go back and you can see your progress um, over the course of the weeks. So that's really not, a lot to do you can you can get a lot done in five minutes it forces you to look at the big shapes and that's what everything is so if you have something in front of you i have like a lot of plants because i was in florida and i was out my art space was out on the lanai and there were lots of plants out there. So I would just pick up. And then after a week, my left hand was getting better. I would just, you know, pick, draw the, uh, the squirt bottle that I used for my watercolors. So if you have a piece of paper now and your pencil at the ready, I am going to time you for 30 seconds. And I want you to draw, do a blind, contour drawing, meaning you are not 
looking at the paper. You're looking at your subject. And you could even do it with your hand. Should we do it upside down or right side up or? Um, for the blind contour drawing, do it, do it like right side up. If you right. don't have anything in front of you that you did like, a, and I'm saying, keep it simple. Don't try and do a whole floral arrangement. Do your hand, do your shoe, do your coffee mug. But I'm going to time you for 30 seconds and I'm going to do it with you. And I'm going to do my left hand and look at my left hand while I draw it out. OK, get your pencils ready. Set timer for 30 seconds. Go. Oh. 30 seconds, your pencils ready timer starting now. Don't lift your pencil up. And that's our 30 seconds. Okay, there's my hand, <laughs> my left hand. So now you've got the exercise of the blind contour drawing where you are not looking at your paper, you're looking at the subject you're drawing and you're using your brain and your eyes and your hand to guide you. So let's see, what else is on my list? I had a whole list of things I wanted to cover tonight. Um, okay, we talked about intention, why you showed up. Like I said, you don't have to share that with me. You don't feel you have to explain to anybody while you're here. I just want you to, know for yourself what you want from this. Um, improving your drawing skills, I get, I get that. But what are you gonna do with it? You know, it, there are many artists out there who they call themselves pho photo realists. And the work is technically so proficient, but sometimes I look at, at it and I say, so where's, where's the passion? Where, you know, where is the, um, the, what moved them to create this other than trying to recreate it a two, you know, a two, on two dimensions. So over the next couple of weeks, we will be learning skills to refine your skills, to get you to draw better. I can't stress enough, it's all practice, 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 practice. And I'm not going to browbeat you if you don't. You know, this is not, uh, there's no homework. And I'm, the unfortunate thing is we're not together. So I'm not there. In the fall, I'm, I think I'm gonna go back to um, live teaching if things continue the way they are. But when I made this curriculum in the fall, that's when the Delta was coming to town or whatever it was. And they thought it'd be a good idea to keep the art classes still remote in the spring. But I would like to return to the live classroom in the fall because there, there's a different energy when we're all creating art together that you can really feel like this visceral hum of, um, you know, like creative vibes in the room. And you can go into your zone when you draw every day. So I'm asking you to do three drawings a day, five minutes each. Set a timer. And you don't have to draw the same thing every day and keep it simple. I would suggest um, one flower. Don't try and do a whole bouquet. We're just thinking of big shapes. So when you, if you do choose a flower, look at it and say, okay, there's got, you know, we, we're starting with, um, 
you know, some kind of middle thing and you're going to be using a pencil. So you very lightly might make that circular light. And then once you've got the circle you like it, say, okay, well, it's really not a circle. You know, it's got these like raggedy edges around it. I don't know what they call that part of the daffodil. And then in the middle of that, you've got these other little things happening. I talk to myself all the time when I draw. Uh, and, then I, and then up here, you've got a leaf that comes up this way. And I am looking at my daffodil more than I'm look. I'm glancing at the paper just to get the, um, the placement. But this whole thing will take me, you know, like five minutes. And that's all you need is to think about those shapes. Oh, this daffodil is going right into that hand. But just think about the shapes, break it down into shapes. Start with the general shape. You've got that little circular yellow thing in the middle and build out from there. Now you might see people in movies or people who are making art and they will hold up their pencil and kind of gauge it for proportion. That is a real thing. You know, like if you're hold, if you're drawing something, you can hold your pencil up next to it and say, okay, so from the tip of the pencil to the bottom of the bud, it's like that much. And you can use that if you're trying to get your proportions down on your paper, you could say, okay, the top of my tulip is there and the bottom of my tulip is there. So you're getting that one-on-one -on -one proportion. So you can use your pencil to help you determine the width of things, you know, instead of just trying to eyeball it all the time. Again, the proportion will come the more you draw. So did everybody do a blind contour drawing of something in front of them? Great, anybody wanna share it? You could hold it up in front. Oh, okay. You can be shy, that's all right. Oh, let me see. Oh, great, okay, great. You did a floral I, motif, yeah. I did, um, I had tulips because we went to a tulip farm on Saturday. So I actually have the tulips Perfect. here. Great. Um, but the bottom part I looked at to do, I forgot, like this part I looked at, I did blind. And then this part, I forgot and I looked down and just drew the two parallel lines. So that wasn't blind. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, the trick with the blind um, contour drawing is to not pick your pencil up. So it yeah. can be uh, hard yeah. like if I, you have to move back to another area. It was easy for me to do that. Yes. But for something else where you've got to move to a different area, yeah, sometimes you right. have to pick it up or take a peek. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Good. Great. All right. So are there any questions about the materials? Uh, one thing I did not cover were sticks of charcoal. They're too, they're too sm smudgy. I don't like to use charcoal. Question? Yes. So what size are the spiral notebooks, the one in your lap and the one on the easel? Oh, this one. I got today at Michael's. They were having, it's buy one, get one 50 off on the, is it the Canson brand? And this is mixed media. Oh, it's bigger than I am. Mixed media, 18 by 24. This one, this one, I. this is so old. This one, I think I may have gotten in mm. staples. Mm. Um, and this has it's nice thick 11. paper too, because you can use, you know, you can paint on these pages and it mm. swings back on itself, which I like. Um, this one. Looks like eight by 11. Something, a friend of mm. mine gets, gives me 
a book every, a sketchbook every year that she dyes the fabric and makes the covers and all that. This is a Canson mixed media, five and a half, eight and a half. Oh. So there's, you can get lots of different sizes. I do recommend if you can work a little large, if you have an eight and a half, 11, Try drawing standing up. I know it's hard to show you here, but sometimes you get a much better perspective on things. If you're standing up, I use the easel so you can see it, but I don't use an easel really when I draw. If I'm drawing, I'm standing up. And sometimes I have just a little lift under my... Um, my sketchbook, like I might put my little sack there. So it's just at a very slight incline. And I like to stand back and use a larger stroke. If you're using a smaller format, you're more inclined to work small. And that's another reason why I've been training my left hand because I've been using my right arm for 60 something years. And it's starting to show signs of wear and tear. So I'm learning how to draw all over again with my left hand. So um, whatever whatever format you're comfortable in, but I, I do encourage you to work larger if you can, if you can, if you have the space. Um, this might be a little bit too large for you. Because, but I like it because I can demo on a large field. Something like this, it's a nine by 12 or eight and a half, 11. This should be perfectly adequate. I would not go smaller than five by seven. I would only use something like this for traveling. And these, you know, these are just really little. So maybe this is like four by six. So. Any other questions on the materials? Any other questions about your assignment for the week? I have okay. a question. Yes. So if we, um, like you said, you know, stand up to, you know, be freer, mm -hmm. um, can you keep the um, sketchbook like flat on the table or it's always better to, or do you have to hold it? Like, can you do it on a table? Or is it yes, better to have your head put up? It on, a, on a table? Let me see. Okay. So if I'm here on the table, I right. want to. I don't want to be all cramped up. I want to be able to use, get a good range of motion in my arm. And uh -huh. if I find it's too flat, I'll just put some, something a little bit under it so that it's at a very slight angle, very okay. slight, maybe you know, ten degrees or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, thank you. But I encourage you to stand when you draw. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I covered everything I wanted to cover for tonight, which was intention, materials, observation versus sight. And we talked about the, um, the blind contour drawing. Contour meaning a continuous line that defines the shape of the object. We did not get into any shading or shadow or any of that tonight. That's coming down the road. And you also got the assignment of three drawings a day, five minutes each. And you can change. I mean, you don't have to draw the same item for a week. I will send you a follow-up email, which I usually do to my students after a class, just going over what we learned. There'll be a link to the um, recording on YouTube. So in case you need to refer back to the class or you wanna watch some of my other classes, uh, feel free to. And we will meet again next Monday night. I can't wait to see what you've done. I hope you're in the mood to share it. But if you are timid and don't want to share your drawings, that's okay too. Can you tell us what your YouTube channel is called? Uh, Katie Goldberg Art. All okay. one, all one thing. But it, yeah, I'll have the um, I'll have the link in tomorrow's email. Okay. Any other questions? 
All right. Um, I was on mute. You said that we could um, try different things, but I was thinking it would be three different things every night, right? It would be three different things every night. You could, you could do three different or, things every day or do three, three drawings of the same thing every day or so um, you don't day to day. It's entirely up to you. Okay. All yeah. right. I want to make this fun for you. <laughs> when I went to art school years ago, the drawing was so intensive and immersive that you know we had to draw a hundred perfect circles. And that was the way they classically trained you years ago. I want to make it more fun for you now and just not have you become a drawing robot. I want you to bring to it your flavor, your flair, your personality. So great. Um, feel free to contact me during the week. You, uh, you'll have my email and I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Stop. Here we go.